My uncle got me into King Crimson. He's that guy who wears a turtleneck, quotes philosophy, and somehow still owns a lava lamp. One day he looked at me dead serious and said, you're not ready for this, but I'm gonna show you anyway. I didn't know if he meant life or prog rock, but it turns out it was both. So, so now I'm stuck in 13-8 time. And here's what I've learned about King Crimson. <laughs> Listening to in the court of the Crimson King is like getting hit by a Mack truck made of jazz. <laughs> King Crimson fans don't just listen, they analyze, theorize, and probably have a Google spreadsheet for it. <laughs> Robert Fripp's guitar playing is so precise, I'm convinced he's secretly some kind of super cyborg sent to shred from the future. King Crimson doesn't just play music, they summon a new existential crisis in every time signature. <laughs> Red is the only album that makes you want to start a revolution, then overthink it for about 45 minutes. <laughs> Listening to King Crimson is a workout. You're not just tapping your foot, you're decoding a prophecy. <laughs> Their live albums sound like they're performing inside a black hole, which honestly checks out. Prog rock fans say King Crimson is accessible, but I still need some kind of Google Translate for some of their rhythms. And if you've ever air guitar to 21st century schizoid man, Congratulations, you just pulled a muscle. Okay, big shout out to Robert Fripp, who I know is here tonight. Thanks for being a good sport. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>